When I was a little kid, I absolutely loved video games, and even though they have gotten me nowhere in life, I still do. And luckily for me, I remember my first video games, and it has all been downhill from there. I saw stuff move on a screen and I could click things. Instant lifelong addiction. When I have to check my ethnicity on a doctor's form, I proudly check other and write in gamer just to show that I'm not afraid of who I am, as well as letting the doctor know that I have the posture of a shrimp and live a sedentary life style right off the bat. While growing up, other kids were probably playing stuff like Diablo, Halo, COD, or CS Source. I was lucky enough to play educational point and click adventure games. And yes, to answer your question, I definitely was the coolest kid at my school, and I for sure was not fat or shy. In all honesty though, I would not trade those games for the world. They made me the man I am today. They taught me about community, friendship, morality, and you know the most important thing of all? shapes. If you remember this sound and logo, you're gonna know exactly what I'm talking about. And if you don't, let me fill you in real quick. In the ancient year of 1992, Humongous Entertainment was founded by a brave man and woman. And they had a noble dream of bringing education and entertainment to children around the world, thus creating the idea of edutainment. And with the founding of this company, they were able to bestow upon the earth their four masterpieces. Putt Putt, Freddy Fish, Pajama Sam, and Spy Fox. And back in the day, these were the best children games around. I mean, heck, even on the Wikipedia it says IGN gave these bad boys such high regards. And rightly so. I mean, if every kid played these games when they were little, we'd live in a society with no crime. There would be no disease. And I can still think back to the day when I was playing these things on my family's bulky off-white desktop in my underwear going on an adventure. And you know, since I had such fond memories of these games, and I know many other people did as well, I just want to talk about it. I want to fill you in. Maybe help you experience that same spark of magic that I experienced as a little six-year-old back in the day. Now, if you never played these games, I'm sorry that your parents never loved you, but the basics of it is that these are point and click adventures that star any of the four main characters. Putt Putt is a little purple car that lives in Car Town with his pet dog Pep. Freddy Fish solves mysteries with their friend Luther in the Great Blue Sea. Pajama Sam uses the realms of his imagination to face his fears. And Spy Fox, he's just there to do cool spy shit. The sticky stun bun worked. Quack's caramel-coated confection has left those guards stuck in their tracks. The amount of adventures for you to go on is, do I dare say, humongous. Do you get it? The stories in these games are lighthearted and simple, but they really do truly capture the essence of childhood imagination while remaining interesting enough for an adult to enjoy it as well. Who doesn't love saving a zoo or thwarting an evil villain's plan? And I know my personal favorite is stopping a full-blown race war from happening between food groups and a little boy's body. As for the actual gameplay, all the games start with you getting a main story objective and then having you travel between places to solve puzzles. And as you travel around, you're going to find different items and new characters to talk to that allow you to complete the game's challenges. Is there an avalanche in the way? Use the shovel you found to dig your way through. A blowfish blocking your path? Find the right seasoning to make them blast off. The more advanced puzzles are gonna have you busting out your funny little detective cap to help you solve them. For example, in Spy Fox 3, when you join the villain's bowling team, you need to observe your surroundings to figure out the right color shirt and name of the character you need to impersonate. The educational part of the games aren't really complicated, it's just basic knowledge of colors and shapes. But if you're like me and haven't studied those for years, this will be a nice refresher for you. In two of the Pajama Sam games, there's even some short little quizzes, but their educational value is up to you to decide. Raindrops keep falling on my head. Yes, very good. One neat thing is that most of these games even have a couple mini games scattered about, but they're of questionable quality at best. The hockey mini game in Putt Putt the Zoo is actually pretty good. I spent a lot of time playing it, but I swear no six year old is actually going to beat this polar bear. He is just so good. 
but hey, it's a free game within a game. I'm definitely not complaining. So the games somewhat do have a difficulty scale. So the putt-putt games, those are baby games, easy. Not even a challenge for a grown man like myself. And as you get to Spy Fox and Pajama Sam, those are the real big boy games, the ultimate challenge. They're gonna make you sweat a little bit. They're gonna make you think. You're gonna feel really good about yourself when you beat them. But still, most of the time, you're gonna take about an hour to beat some of these games. I mean, heck, when Putt Putt Saves the Zoo, I could have beat that bad boy in 30 minutes, but I spent like half an hour just listening to these monkeys recite their poetry. How about ants? Ants. Hmm. Oh, got it. <laughs> I ran across some ants. They got in my pants. So I did a little dance. <laughs> if you play through most of these games the second time, you'll actually experience a slightly different story along with different item placements. And if you think about it, since kids aren't that smart, by the time they have finished a second playthrough, they will have forgotten about the first one, thus creating a cycle of infinite replayability. Moving on from that, however, what really drew me and other kids into these games are the incredibly detailed and charming worlds that Humongous Entertainment was able to create. Aside from the first two puzzles, putt-putt games which are done in a pixel style, the rest of the games have hand-drawn animation. And thank god, I mean just look at this putt-putt, holy moly. When I first saw the backdrop for the Weather Factory in Pajama Sam 2, I thought this was the height of gaming. Maybe I was right. When I was little, it just felt like I was sucked into the screen and I was in these worlds myself. Wherever you go, there's going to be a ton of color, visually interesting characters, and no space on your screen is going to be wasted. They fill this to the brim. And if you randomly click around the map, there's these silly little animations that play, and they are almost seemingly endless. You could spend 10 minutes on each screen in this game. But what really brings these games to the next level is the voice acting. Oh my god. All of the characters' voices are just ingrained in my head. Pajama Sam is ready for action. Good morning, Mr. Baldini. Today's the opening of the Car Town Zoo. I don't know, but, but it's a bigger day. Hey, you got me. It also really lets us see the character's personalities. I mean, I know exactly what kind of animal Spy Fox is when he says a signature catchphrase. I'm in there like swimwear. When I was little, I had no idea what the fuck that meant. Now, as a young adult, I still have no idea what the fuck that meant. In retrospect, the games did have to be voice acted because what kid could read at that age? I mean, it took him like four hours just to beat the game. But it just didn't have to be this good. The side characters you encounter are a large part of filling out these worlds, and they always have something interesting to say. They also aren't your typical dumbed down kids characters. While some of them are just there to be wacky, a lot of them reflect different kinds of people you meet as you grow older. Just where do you think you are going? And on top of everything else, we got some banger soundtracks in these games. I mean, just listen to this song from Putt Putt. Welcome to the zoo, 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 with the kangaroos, the elephant, roos, the monkey, roos, and the chimpanzee, the tigers, too, canaries, too, the carries, too, the bears are all hairy, the, the zoo, 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 zoo. The music in these games is just the butter on the toast that pushes these games to an 11 out of 10. It completes the ambiance and provides a je ne sais quoi that lets you just sit tight and vibe a little bit and relax. And when I was playing Pajama Sam, I sat in an elevator for like a minute just listening to this song. I mean, who wrote this, man? Daft Punk or something? I will say, though, you are going to hear a lot of saxophone, but for me, it was definitely not a complaint. In fact, a bonus. And after all of this that I've said to you, I know you're sitting in your chair, you're like, wow, how do I play these games? They sound amazing. And boy, do I have some great news. They're available on Steam, and they're super cheap. $7 for a game that'll take you back to your childhood? Count me in. Hey guys, it's me, Underwater Dog 2. Thank you for watching my video. I really appreciate it a lot, I swear. And if you like the video, please hit the subscribe button. It really helps me out. I hope you all stay safe and have a wonderful day. Bye bye.